Hey everyone and welcome to another day of chasing trains. We're starting local in the Cincinnati area. I stopped by the CSX Queensgate yard to check it out, but I'm going to put that footage at the end of the video. Meanwhile, we'll head to Winton Place, the busiest place to rail fan in the area. There were quite a few folks enjoying the warmest January weather when I got there. It's always nice seeing the color position light signals here. Sadly, we would only see red on both signals while we were here. But in a first for me, the signal covering the third track shows a red over yellow over flashing green. It's a medium approach medium. This signal controls traffic heading up the Norfolk Southern Line to the Sharonville Yard and beyond. Real quick, I also noticed this, an Ohio Central SD40-2 north of here. It seems every time I stop by Winton Place, there's always a train waiting to enter the yard, although I've yet to see one actually make its way south. First up, we have a southbound CSX with two GE units on the head end. XLC dispatch, Jacksonville Hey, we'll have to do plant uh, M1028, engine 879. M5-10-28-879, lead 5277, trail at Fortress CL-9 are on duty 1230 hours, 9053, bullets, quick 40 of them, 29 left, 49 at 5193 on our truck, it's 5028 plane, uh, lead low motor, 40 10 inch, we are key, long, high, use it, affecting our movement. So what's been route, CC, yes, CO, yes, CC, no, and calendar uh, days are current. over. This is Mill Creek, it's passing over. Once a very polluted waterway, but over the years, they've relatively cleaned it up. That's good. Where you at? What do y'all need to do to leave? Over. Here in the RA, Kimball just takes the boat. Need to, uh, get a signal for headroom. Drop back into the game. We got a trip a while. It was a very soggy mess in the area, but you can see how wide open Winton Place is. There were several cars and trucks lined up to the right with a great view of all the action. My only two complaints about this area are the slow track speeds, and it's just not very scenic. But again, when it comes to sheer number of trains, you just can't beat it. A few miles around that bend is the CSX Queensgate Yard, and then even further south is the Norfolk Southern Guest Street Yard. A little while after the CSX train clears, we see the Norfolk Southern train heading toward that medium approach medium. Like I said, it's pretty slow through here, so I'm going to speed things up. Z320, medium approach medium, went place, north on 3 out. I love these CPL signals, but I always worry. One day I'm gonna get here and I'm gonna see concrete footings for a new signal bridge, and with it, their demise. They're still going strong though, so hopefully they stick around for years to come. We'll watch for a bit, but I think I hear the train I was looking for. Well, I wasn't looking for it at the time. I just wanted a northbound CSX to check out a few new spots along the Toledo sub. M510, trim tower yard master. I get the pocket R H over. Pocket R H, we thank you. After this Norfolk Southern train clears, next up, another southbound CSX. I believe this is M351. This train is coming off the CSX Toledo subtracks. Oftentimes, southbound traffic, whether CSX or Norfolk Southern, will take the NS tracks from Hamilton to allow for directional running, but it seems to be more of a coin flip which route is taken these days.
This trip is about new spots along the Toledo sub, so I opted to head a little north of here to the Ivorydale area. If you've heard of Ivory Soap, this is where it started. Ivorydale is the area where Procter & Gamble created one of the largest soap manufacturing facilities in the world. But now, this is the chemical home to many companies in Cincinnati, as you can tell by all the tank cars in this small yard. Now, the drone really does give you a good sense of just how many plants are in the area. You're about to see one of the biggest blunders someone trying to record something can make. It's called reverse rolling, and it's when you think you're hitting the button to start recording, but in reality, you just stopped it. This is the last frame of video my ground camera caught and why there's no audio for this section, so we'll just listen in as Y126 waits to head south. 6 0 dispatch Jacksonville Edge. Y126, 28 over. The engine, the Y126, 28 over. Yes, sir, we're at the south end of Iverdale. I got everything punched in there, Clint. Uh, engine 6470 in the lead, ready to come out on two there, and uh, we'll get pull out, shove back at the conductor on the head end. All right. Good uh, tight there. Let me get 510 by you northbound, and uh, we'll get you out there. Over. Right, 510. Uh, we'll be on 96 if you want to give us a shout, if you don't mind. Not at all. Uh, I'll give you a shout 96 there. Appreciate it. Thank you. As we fly south, we can see M310 coming toward us. If you look closely, you can barely see two yellow locomotives in the bottom of the screen. They're RSSX units 4294, that's a GP7, and 574 is a GP15T. Once again, that's Mill Creek the tracks are going over. Alright, he gets on board. Uh, okay to head north, signal location over. Alright, once on board, okay to head north, signal location. Thank you, Clint. Have a good day. Appreciate it, Mark. Yeah, I did say. Thank you. You didn't make Jimmy smoke a cigarette a lot of time, did you? And now he's just pretending. We have L4 to RH. Over. One thing I find frustrating about the drone is when I watch the video over again on my monitor, I always spot things I wish I would have stopped to check out. In this case, it's those two yellow switches on the left side of the screen. All right, uh, stand by. Just give me a shout when uh, you're by either one. Okay, yeah, uh, 879 was his engine number. That's right, 879, correct. I will give you a shout here when he clears up. All right, thank you. See you, Spectre. 6 0 c dispatch, Jack's the lynch. So 126 28, over. Answer the well, 126 28, over. Yeah, that 510 is uh, north of our location here south of Iverdale. All right, understand that north of your location. Well, 126 28, blocked out two tracks, Spring Road, Wyoming, permission to open up south in Iverdale. Occupied two track, work north to south, looking out 510 ahead of all right, 126-28, engine 6470. Understand, we've got permission to open up south end of Iverdale. Occupy number two, work north and south. Spring Grove, Wyoming, looking out for 510 uh, northbound. That is good copy there at 1403, CLC. 1403, CLC, DTF. Thank you, Clint. Oh, you're welcome. Man. See you, Spud, Jackson. southbound. One track approach medium North Bend Road, L4. Well, what's the name? Southbound North Bend, look good. I will let you know. Well, our train can go at a pretty good clip of 35 and then 45 miles an hour before our next stop of Hamilton, 
So after consoling myself for not recording on my ground camera, I hit the pedal to the metal and tried to beat 310 to Hamilton. Oh, and I just noticed another rail fan on the other side of the tracks. I wanted to shoot Hamilton for a few weeks, but barely had any time to set up before 310 got here. Just to the right of where the old locomotives are is where the old depot building sat. They've been moved to behind me, and we'll see them in just a minute. As we pull back for a wide shot, you can see the buildings still have the steel support beams in place. It's amazing that they're able to move these a few hundred feet and save them from destruction. Hopefully, the city is able to do a great job restoring them. It's kind of a shame, though, because the Amtrak Cardinal goes past where they once stood, and it would have been so cool to turn them back into a working station. From what I'm hearing, the city plans to revitalize the depots and then also build an Amtrak station nearby. Hopefully it happens. Another thing I didn't notice was this meet. Well, I'm calling it a meet with another CSX train. This one is taking the Norfolk Southern routing I mentioned earlier as it heads southbound. Now, Hamilton is a great spot for rail fanning. There's plenty of space on both sides of the tracks and several fast food joints nearby for something to eat. It has all the CSX traffic heading north to Toledo and the NS traffic heading north on the Newcastle district. What do you all think about where they put the buildings? I'll come back in a few months when they're starting to renovate them and give another update. Well, this shot gives you a better idea of the track layout. Like I said, this area is busy as can be with train traffic. Plus, it only has two crossings that go under or over the tracks, so folks in the area aren't nearly as big a fans of the railroads as we are. As our train finishes up, I'm hoping to catch it again in the Trenton area. CSX Equipment Defect Detector File Post 27.7 Track 1 No defects No defects Total Axle 3 2 4 End of Transmission 6879 North 3344 North 3347 North 3779 North Square I barely caught up with 310 and could only hang on to its coattails as it cruised at a solid 50 miles an hour for this stretch. 79 North 1, clear, 302, Buckingham. 79 North, clear, Trent, Buckingham. I figured I'd try to beat it to the Great Miami River Bridge in Dayton, but it was already there crossing by the time I got there. I decided my next stop would be Troy, Ohio. I needed somewhere far enough ahead that I had plenty of interstate miles to get in front of 310. I knew there were a couple of slow spots between Dayton and Troy, so I figured that nearly 20 miles would be enough. I double checked a nearby signal to make sure I hadn't missed our train and was not only happy to see what I believe is a clear signal, but another historical signal and not one of the newer models. These signals are still in several spots along the route, including multiple ones at the Destro Diamond, and they're also along the Indianapolis line that breaks off at Hamilton. I didn't have long though, so I got set up and a short time later, here came our train. I wonder what these crews must think of a guy willing to drive an hour or more just to keep filming the same train, especially when there isn't a heritage unit or something special about it.
Well, I think we can beat this train to another spot on the line, the crossover in Sydney. That's where the Toledo line goes underneath the Indianapolis line subdivision. I put the pedal to the metal once more and was eventually able to get in front of 310. While driving though, I realized I had a problem. There was nowhere to get set up along the Toledo line and get a view of the underpass. I knew I only had a minute or two to get set up, so I went to a spot I knew from previous trips to Sydney in my other job. I got the drone out and powered on, then set up my ground camera and hit record. Moments later, 310 comes roaring through. That defect detector is less than two miles south of here. I don't know if this was a shorter than usual 310 or what, but it seems small compared to what I'm used to. I decided to stop by the old passenger station next to the Indianapolis line before heading home. We lucked out and were greeted with a limited clear signal. Whatever was coming toward us was going to make a diverging move. As our new train speeds toward us, we can see it make the move from one track to another. It's always a good day when I see a train going over this bridge. That's the Great Miami River it goes over. It was built a century ago, and except for cracking and missing concrete, isn't in too bad a shape. In the hole at Lombard, one, about to knock down the cave room. Small, 351. The defect detector you just heard is for our first train, 310, as it passes through Wapakoneta. As the lights go dark, our day has come to an end. But hold on, I still have a little video of the Queensgate Yard for you to check out. 
Nothing too special, I just kind of floated around taking a look at things. I'll leave you with the yard footage, but I do hope you enjoyed another railfan trip with me, and I hope you'll subscribe so you can enjoy the next video I put out. Until then, hope you have a great day. Knock it down, 986. Come on in R6, talk to me at the north end, you're going to double over. Train ID Z one three seven two eight. Got an NS four six two five four two eight six six two seven zero. Crew names Wilson Krukenberg on duty ten thirty a.m. Bulletin nine zero six nine zero four six five sixty lows eighty one empty nine four one zero tons feet nine one four four. Sufficient HVT, fuel is 3100, no key train, no restrictions, no work. PTC, yes. Trip optimizer, no. DP, no. Inspection, yes. Alright, second location there, Tower 8, Fort Wayne, over. Copy that, signal indication of Fort Wayne. Alright, guys, y'all have a good day. Going next. Oh, one. Yeah, come on out. I got you lying towards the flank. 